So to generate the fear VR stimulus from my lab in 20, was it? Yeah, 2016, we went down to Guadalupe Island off the coast of Mexico, me and a guy named Michael Muller, who's a very famous um, portrait photographer, but also takes photos of sharks. And we used 360 video to build VR of great white sharks, brought it back to the lab. We published that study in Current Biology. In 2017, went back down there. Um, and that was the year that I exited the cage. They, you lower the cage with a crane. And that year I exited the cage. I had a whole mess with a air failure the day before. I was breathing from a hookah line while in the cage. I had no scuba on, divers were out. The thing got boa constrictored up and I had an air failure and I had to actually share air and it was a whole mess. A story for another time. But the next day, because I didn't want to get PTSD and it was pretty scary, the next day I cage exited um, with some other divers. And, and it turns out with these great white sharks, it, in Guadalupe, the, the water's very clear and you can swim toward them and then they'll they'll veer off you if you swim toward them. Otherwise they see you as prey. Well, in the evening, you've brought all the cages up and you're uh, hopefully all alive. And we... We're hanging out fishing for a tuna. Uh, we had a, a, one of the, the crew on board had um, a, a line in the water and was fishing for tuna for dinner. And a shark took the tuna off the line. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a very dramatic take. And you can see the, the just absolute size of these great white sharks. The, the waters there are filled with them. That's the one. Uh, but look, so this video, yeah. just the neural link link, was shot by Matt McDougall who is the um, head neurosurgeon at Neuralink. There it is, takes it. Now, believe it or not, it looks like it missed, like it didn't get the fish. It actually just cut that thing like a bandsaw. So I'm up on the deck uh -huh. with Matt. Yeah. And so when you look at it from the side, you you really get a sense of this, of the, the girth of this freaking thing. So as it comes up, if you pop, look, look at the that. size of that thing. And they it's move the through the water power. with such speed. Just a couple, so when you're in the cage and the cage is lowered down below the surface, they're, they're going around. You're not allowed to chum the water there. Some people do it. Um, but, and then when you cage eggs it, they're like, well, what are you doing out here? And then, you know, they, you swim toward them, they veer off. But what's interesting is that if you look at how they move through the water, mm -hmm. all it takes for one of these great white sharks, when it sees a tuna or something it wants to eat, is like two flicks of the tail. Mm -hmm. And becomes like a missile. Mm -hmm. It's just unbelievable economy of effort. And Ocean Ramsey, who is, in my opinion, the greatest of all cage exit shark divers, this woman who dove with enormous great white sharks, she really understands their behavior when they're aggressive, when they're not going to be aggressive. She and her husband, Juan, I believe his name is, do they understand how the tiger sharks differ from the great white sharks. We were down there basically like not understanding any of this. We never should have been there. And actually the air failure the day before plus cage exiting the next day, I told myself after coming up from the cage exit, that's it. I'm no longer taking risks with my life. I want to live. Got back across the border um, a couple days later. And I was like, that's it. I, I don't take risks with my life any longer. But yeah, McDougal, Matt McDougal shot that video. And then it went quote unquote viral through uh, Nature's Metal. We passed them that video. I actually, uh, I saw a video where a, an instructor was explaining how to behave with a shark in the water and that you don't want to be swimming away because then you're acting like a prey. That's right. And then you want to be acting like a predator by looking at it and swimming towards swimming it. Right towards them and they'll bank off. Now, if yeah. you don't see them, they're ambush predators. And yeah. You know, you're swimming in the surface. And apparently if they get close, you should just like guide them away by yeah. like grabbing them and moving them away. Some people will actually roll them. Um, but if they're coming in full speed, you're not going to roll the shark. But it, here we are back to dark stuff again. I like the shark attack map and the shark attack map shows that um, you know, Northern California, there were a couple, actually a guy's head got taken off. Um, he was swimming North of San Francisco. There's been a couple in Northern uh, California. That was really tragic, but most of them are in Florida and Australia. Yeah. Florida. So Same the, with the Surf Rider yeah. Foundation shark attack map, there it is. Yeah. Had, they have a great map. There you go. So they look like, the look, they have all animals. their scars on them. So if you, if you zoom in on, um, I mean, look, look at this. If you go to the North America. Um, look at skulls. There's, there's a yeah where they're where they're deadly attacks, um, but in yeah Northern California, sadly, this is really tragic. If you zoom in on this one, um, I read about this. Uh, this guy, if you click the link, fifty year old male, he was in chest high water. This is just tragic. I feel so sad for him and his family. 
you know, he's just, um, three members of the party chose to go in. He was, you know, nine, Jai was in his chest high water, 25 to 50 yards from shore. Great, breached the water, seized his head, and that was it. You know, so it does happen. It's very infrequent. Um, if you don't go in the ocean, it's a very, very, very low probability. Um, but but if it, it doesn't happen six times in a row, no, just... <laughs> an 120% chance. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think wins, uh, a saltwater crocodile or a shark? Okay, I do not like saltwater crocodiles. They scare me to no end. Muller, Michael Muller, who dove all over the world, he sent me a picture of him diving uh, with salties, saltwater crocs in Cuba. It was a smaller one, but goodness gracious, have you seen the size of some of those saltwater crocs? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm thinking, the, I'm thinking the, the sharks are so agile. They're amazing. They've head cammed one or body cammed one um, moving through the kelp bed. Um, and you look and it's just, they're so agile moving through the water. And, and it's looking up at the surface, like the camera's looking at the surface. And you just realize if you're out there, um, you're not, and you're swimming and you get hit by a, by a shark. You're, you're not I was going to talk shit and say that a salty has way more bite force, but according to the internet, recently data indicates that the shark has a stronger bite. So I, I, was, I was assuming that a crocodile would have a, a stronger bite force and therefore agility doesn't matter, but mm. apparently a shark. Yeah, and, and turning one of those big salties is is probably not that, you know, turning around, it's like a battleship. I mean, those sharks are unbelievable. They hit from all sorts. Oh, and they... They do this thing. We saw this. You, you're out of the cage or in the cage, and you and you'll look at one, and, and you'll see its eye kind of like looking at you. They can't really foveate, but they'll look at you, and you're tracking it. And then you'll look down, and you'll realize that one's coming at you. They're just, they're they're ambush predators. They're working together. They're, it's fascinating. I like I like how you know that they can't foveate. <laughs> right, you're already considering the vision system yeah, there. Yeah. And it's a very primitive eyes on the system. Very primitive eyes on the side of the head. Their vision is decent enough. They're mostly obviously sensing things with their um, electro sensing in the water, but also um, olfaction. Um, yeah, I spend far too much time thinking about and learning about the, the visual systems of different animals. If you get me going on this, like we'll be here all night. See, this is what I have the smuggler on to. I saw this in a store and I got it because this is from a shark. Goodness. Yeah, I can't say I ever saw one with teeth this big, but it's beautiful. Imagine that. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's probably you know, you, probably your blood pressure just goes and you you don't feel feel a thing. Yeah, um, it's not good. Before we went down for the cage exit, um, a guy in our crew, Pat Dossett, who's um, very experienced diver, um, asked one of the South African divers that um, so what you know like what's the contingency plan if like somebody catches a bite and they were like. He was like every man for himself. And they're like, basically saying like, if somebody catches a bite, like that's it. Yeah. You know? Um, anyway, I thought we were going to bring up something happy. Oh, that is happy. <laughs> well, we Nature lived. is we beautiful. Lived. Yeah, nature is beautiful. Uh, we lived. Um, but you know, th there are there are happy things. You brought up nature as metal. 